Good morning, um, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Christian Dimmer, and uh, it's a great honor and privilege to, to speak here to you today and to share a few um, observations and reflections about um, rural regeneration in, in Japan. Um, just before I get started, um, disclaimer, I'm, I'm um, what you would call in English um, a bit, bit disrespectfully a country bumpkin. So I grew up in a tiny village in Germany with um, 1,000 inhabitants. So um, I have um, a bit of, of, of an idea of um, how rural life really is and um, the kind of nostalgic um, Acadian ideas that are projected into it. Um, so uh, in the next 15 minutes, I will um, try to give an overview um, of the situation um, in, in um, rural Japan. Um, I'm a scholar, um, so I, I will also show you um, quite a few uh, numbers and charts as well, so that you get a, a better sense of um, what is happening here, what has been happening here for a while, uh, and what the implications are. Um, second, I will talk about um, um, a few um, historical vignettes um, showing us that this is actually something that has been intimately connected uh, with one and another, um, just as much as it has been in England as well in the uh, in the past, um, with thinking about industrialization and the enclosure movement, for example. Um, then I will talk about... Um, Two, uh, two or three recent shocks um, that catapulted rural decline into the public view that uh, really heightened the public awareness of that. Um, then talk about a few different approaches, a small uh, rough typology of what is going on um, in terms of rural regeneration in, in Japan and end um, with a few um, concluding thoughts. Okay. Um, so let's get um, into it. Um, let's start with um, the unpleasant visuals, um, talking, um, looking at these kind of um, historical developments. So this is a timeline we see um, from 1954 to 2014. And we see in um, red, um, purple and green, the, the, the rural, uh, the urban development, the growth of big cities, Tokyo in red. And correspondingly, we see in, in orange um, the population development in regional and in rural areas um, correspondingly. So we see in the 1960s massive urban growth um, with um, up to 360,000 people moving into Tokyo in a single year. And in that very year, um, rural Japan losing um, 650,000 um, inhabitants. So um, this is just to show, without going into any details, that, that um, the urban and the rural are always um, closely interconnected, um, that it never really has made sense um, um, to just talk about rural areas or urban areas. We always needed to talk to um, about these um, issues um, at the same time, and it works. Um, this as well is um, important um, to understand um, the um, urgency of, of what is happening in Japan. Um, next to China, Japan is the most rapidly aging country. So we see here a timeline from the year 800 to 2100. And um, we see that the Japanese population was um, growing um, steadily, grew then um, during the pre-modern Edo period. And then um, with the industrialization, with the opening of the country to the West, um, grew very rapidly um, from uh, 33 million in 1868 to um, 127 million in 2000. And um, there are projections that are actually um, indicating that we might go down back to um, 60 million people, 40 million people. Um, there are different calculations here. But the point here is, the takeaway is, we have very rapid growth of populations, of cities as well, and we will be confronted with very rapid contraction and um, decline as well. Um, keep in mind that um, uh, Japan is an island nation um, and um, immigration isn't a playing a very big role at this moment. So um, this is very different from uh, continental Europe. 
and also still very different from, from England, uh, that is also an island. Um, here as well, um, it's not just depopulation that is the problem of Japan, but um, here we see an animation that I took from uh, Kay Tullings um, on Wikipedia. Um, so you see from the 1870s to, to today, um, the uh, demographic pyramid. So we have a very healthy um, demographic development. Um, we have um, a, a small number of old people and then um, a wide basis of young people. But this is now changing um, from the 1970s onwards. Fewer and fewer children are being born. And um, the remaining population is becoming older and older and older. And this has massive implications for the whole economy. It has massive implications for the whole uh, social system as well. So and there's a very strong sense of, of urgency here. Um, we're soon uh, nearing the end of the graph. So please bear with me um, a little, little bit longer. Um, here, um, this is a graphic that shows um, the, the number of empty buildings um, in relation to the total housing stock. Um, in light blue, you see the total housing stock. And in dark blue, you see the number of empty buildings in thousands. And uh, in red, uh, this is the percentage of empty buildings. So currently, um, we have 14% of, of all buildings in Japan being empty. And according to different calculations, to different scenarios, we will end up with 20% um, um, to 30% empty buildings in 2038. So in average in Japan, um, every third building will be empty and vacant. And in certain areas, this will be more pronounced in other areas less. But this, of course, creates massive challenges um, for planning and also for communities. What do we do with all these empty buildings? Um, I'm not going into this. Um, what we see here is just um, empty um, buildings, the share of empty buildings in different parts of Tokyo. So even in Tokyo, we have a lot of, of empty buildings. So in certain parts of Tokyo, 16% of the housing stock is actually vacant and, and unused. And um, we don't know what to do. So um, in rural areas, this is very pronounced, but it's also very pronounced in cities as well. And this is very different from um, um, European cities, cities in North America, where we're confronted with a massive housing shortage. In Japan, um, this is completely different. Um, so um, keep that um, on the radar. Now, in, in the next um, few slides, um, just a few um, historical remarks here. Um, this is, for example, from the 1930s after the uh, world economic crisis. On the left-hand side, we see a poster where um, of an agency that is actually buying daughters from farmers to sell them as mates to the cities or um, as prostitutes as well. Um, so very poor um, lives in urban areas in the 1930s. And already in the 1930s, also, we see rural economic rehabilitation campaigns. Um, on the right-hand side, this is a poster of that. And um, in the last couple of years, um, Con Vajiro, um, with his um, ethnographic approach to architecture and urbanism, has become very famous. Um, but Con Vajiro has also worked as an architect in rural areas um, in order to regenerate um, these areas, but also in order to map and um, to um, to preserve um, the rapidly disappearing um, rural lifestyles and, and rural architecture. Um, later on in the 1960s, we have now people massively using moving into the city centers. And this is the cities are growing very rapidly and there is not enough space. So on the right hand side, um, the metabolists that you're all very familiar with were concerned with creating megastructures in order to accommodate as many people as possible in the ever more crowded cities. And on the left-hand side, we see um, a TV series that was broadcasted between 1963 and 1985 called The Bright Village, Akadui uh, Noson, uh, that is trying to bring people back to the countryside, that is trying to advertise the virtues of rural living, yet um, this kind of um, trend towards migration to the urban centers um, remained very pronounced and remained unbroken. 
uh, in the 1980s, then uh, the government created a law called um, the uh, um, the um, resort law, trying to create um, um, entertainment facilities and theme parks in rural areas, and to in order to bring urbanites to rural areas. And that was deemed as a good way of um, regenerating rural, rural areas. So you would create a kind of rural Acadian playground for urbanites to come and entertain themselves and then go back um, to the city. Um, but um, it's, of course, not a big surprise that this um, completely um, backfired. Um, so nowadays, if you are into photography, um, you can um, go and explore these um that and um, abandoned um, theme parks in rural areas, which have become an attraction um, in the, their in their own as well. Now, a few of a few um, um, important um, shocks that have um, highlighted uh, all of this. Um, so um, I, I showed you it has always been a big topic, but it has been a big topic by um, experts and uh, for experts and policymakers, um, not so much for the general public, although I'm, I'm slightly exaggerating here. Um, one of the, the, the major game changers was the tsunami in uh, 2011, um, because um, um, most of the victims were um, elderly people. Um, the tsunami hit, <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, uh, the tsunami hit um, an area that um, where this kind of depopulation and hyper-aging was al already very pronounced, and therefore many elderly people were um, among the dead who, were, um, um, who lost their life in the tsunami. Um, and then we had um, a lot of architects, a lot of urban planners, a lot of planning students now going, going to these rural areas in order to help the elderly people to rebuild um, their communities. So you had now hundreds and thousands of young architects and planning students going to rural areas and being exposed um, to this whole complex. Um, before, uh, um, this wasn't really um, a very big topic. People had been working on it, but it wasn't as big a topic as it is now and um, after the tsunami. Um, a second shock was a book that was published um, by a um, uh, former governor of, of uh, the rural prefecture of Iwate, um, Mr. Mastuda. And um, he predicted that um, by the year 2040, half of Japanese cities are threatened with depo uh, depopulation and extinction because there are not enough young people. There are not enough young women in these areas actually to... to uh, um, regenerate the population. And um, this was a, a major shock in 2014 when this book um, came out. Um, it was um, very broadly discussed in media, um, this big number that um, 896 um, cities would um, disappear from the map. Um, as you can see here um, on this screenshot from a TV broadcast, um, everything in red is, is basically um, depopulated um, zone. So um, over the last 10 to 15 years or so, we have now um, different kind of um, regeneration approaches um, being um, tried out. And I say consciously tried out because um, what is happening currently in Japan is unprecedented um, in uh, modern um, history. Um, up to now, every country was occupied with um, perpetual growth, um, but um, now we have to seriously think about contraction and shrinking and depopulation and sh uh, shrinking well and sh uh, shrinking smart. So um, there is no um, golden or, or no silver bullet here, no philosopher's stone. Many people are trying out things, many people are prototyping, and many of the speakers are uh, today as well. Um, they're pioneers in, in, in trying out things without knowing um, whether they succeed or not. The first um, approach is um, our um, second, uh, our third speaker in today's panel, um, Junko Kunihiro-san. Um, she, um, I would count her and we can discuss whether she sees herself like that or not um, later on in our discussion um, as, as a new kind of professional field. Um, people living in urban areas, but they're passionate, they care about um, the regions, and they go and work there as professional architects, planners, or town managers in order to, to work with local communities and with local government as a job. 
Um, second approach is um, our second speaker of the panel um, speaking after me, um, Kyoko Wainai. Um, she um, represents um, a kind of, of phenomenon where you have people who have been doing um, something completely else, uh, something um, different somewhere completely else, and somehow discover a passion for um, rural areas. They see new possibility there. And they go and they try out things. They don't know yet what they want to do, um, but they start to change. They start in small steps. They gradually um, um, broaden their activities. And they do so not because they want to change the world, but they want to change their life, their lifestyles. And um, they live change, um, if you will. And um, we, um, we will certainly learn more about it later on. Uh, number three is actually an interesting government-induced um, system. It's called the um, Regional Development Corporation, CORE. So the government is basically paying young people um, for three years uh, a small salary um, if they decide to go to a rural community and um, start um, to live there. And um, the idea is um, if you live there, hopefully you like it so much um, that you keep on staying there or that um, you bring great ideas from the city that will help to create um, positive um, influences here. So um, currently we have around um, uh, 6,000 young people going to around 1,200 communities um, every year through these kind of government funded systems. Um, fourth is a kind of more strategic networked approach. Um, this is an organization here called um, the Next Commons Lab. Um, they want to create a new kind of post-capitalist um, society, and they're building up a whole network of, of different um, change-making hubs um, across Japan and even started now to engage in Taiwan. So it takes on a very interesting um, transnational um, perspective here. Maybe um, we can bring them to England as well and to Germany, where I come from. I hope so. Um, so this is very strategic. Um, this is a cooperation also with the government and cooperation also with co uh, cooperations with companies who are sponsoring this as well. And um, these are just um, a few of the projects that are being carried out by uh, Next Commons Lab across of Japan. Um, so um, prototyping new forms of, of learning. Um, prototyping new ways of, of um, uh, socially and environmental conscious tourism, uh, local trading, local production, local consumption, working with um, dealing with vacant houses, um, reviving forestry, reviving agriculture, local brewing, as we will see um, with the example of kamikatsu, um, robots and drones um, for agriculture when we don't have any farmers anymore to grow our food. So um, the, uh, the challenges are legion, but also there is a lot of um, interesting prototyping going on all across Japan. Um, and this is why it is so interesting and so stimulating to, to look at Japan and in general um, to learn from um, one another. Um, five also, uh, lastly, there are um, now um, organized um, groups, um, organizations that are uh, promoting um, fairs in metropolitan Japan, um, where actually then uh, very innovative um, communities are coming and marketing themselves, rural communities marketing themselves in Tokyo in order to recruit young people who want to relocate and who want to become part of these um, exciting rural communities. Um, this is a photo that I took in 2016 that was the first um, such kind of fair in Tokyo. And um, at that time, also, there was a, a booth in Kamikatsu, actually, um, talking about um, zero waste um, community. Uh, it was a very popular booth. Uh, so later on, um, you will hear more about um, Kamikatsu as well. So um, I'm already going over time, so um, let me just wrap up. Um, so um, we see here, um, this is um, um, the assassinated Prime Minister Abe and uh, his um, first minister for um, re uh, re regional and rural regeneration, um, Ishiba. And uh, Ishiba was saying, I'm telling them, the populating rural towns to compete. Am I telling them to compete? Yes, I am. Does it mean... Um, 
uh, that um, gaps are widening among the regions? Yes, you bet. Um, if we equalize things among those who make an effort and those who don't, the whole nation will collapse. Each village, each town, each city needs to compete and work out how to revive their own community. Uh, this kind of survival of the fittest. Um, so this is kind of giving um, expression to this kind of neoliberal credo um, that is uh, being propagated by the government. So the national government doesn't have the money anymore. Um, they tell the communities now, go and take care of yourself, and um, the, the fit ones will survive, the others not, and they deserve so. Um, I paraphrase here. So um, the government is kind of um, seeing this from a neoliberal um, kind of perspective. And then um, we have the local innovators on the other side um, that you will see in the following present, uh, presentation that are doing things for their very own reasons as well. So pay attention to that. Um, think about uh, that and maybe also address uh, this kind of, of um, danger here of uh, um, neoliberal abandonment of the government of the rural periphery versus um, self-sustainment um, and um, community empowerment. Um, yeah, this is the last slide that I want to uh, talk about. Um, this is um, the author uh, Kinoshita Hitoshi. Um, he wrote many books about um, use, uh, thinking about um, rural regeneration. Um, his uh, last book of 2021 is called um, Why um, Community Regeneration um, is Failing. Um, so very often we're only looking at the bright side of things. We are only interested in the beautiful case studies and things that are looking nice at this very moment. But are they actually sustainable in the long run? So um, we shouldn't be... Um, blinded um, by the starlight and all the exam uh, interesting examples that we uh, see, but we should go back as well and see how they are actually performing. And lastly, um, his 2018 book um, uh, is, um, a, is actually about a novel and it, it tells the story, uh, the book on the right hand side, I can't see the title now because um, the window is in, in, in the way. Um, it's basically a novel of somebody who doesn't know anything about uh, rural regeneration and he inherits a piece of land, a house of his mother or grandmother. He goes to a rural area and starts to care about the community and who starts to become a community innovator. He starts to encounter many difficult problems and challenges. And the, the, the novel is a kind of um, guidebook of um, how we as non-experts, how every one of us can start to take the first step to start to care about um, what um, Yuki was saying in, um, in her introduction before as well. So this is very, very important. And with this, I am um, concluding my um, presentation and I am hope, um, handing over to um, Kyoko um, Wainai, who um, is talking about her project in rural Akita.